<laughs> there should be no doubt that you are convinced today that Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. Would you give the choir, the kids' ministry, everybody a big old hand clap of praise? <laughs> Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you do something in this place today that only you can do. And we honor you ahead of time and bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen and amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 12 in the NLT. I'm going to read verse 12 through 26, 1 Corinthians 15 in the NLT. And then I'll tell you what we're going to talk about here tonight. But I mean today, this is, um, this is huge. It's huge that we make a deposit in our spirits where this is concerned. Verse 12 says this, but tell me this, since we preach that Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you saying there will be no resurrection of the dead? For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless and your faith is useless. And we apostles would all be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave, but that can't be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied and, than anyone in the world. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. So you see, just as death came in the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. But there is an order to this resurrection. Christ was raised as the first of the harvest, then all who belong to Christ will be raised when he comes back. After that, the end will come, and when he will, tur when he will, retur when he will turn the kingdom over to God the Father, having destroyed every ruler and authority and power. For Christ must reign until, the, until he humbles all his enemies beneath his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. This morning, for a few minutes, I want to talk to you from the subject entitled Resurrection Benefits. Resurrection Benefits. In other words, you, we hear about the resurrection. We celebrate uh, Easter every year, and we need to know what benefit for me, for my family, for my life comes from resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a significant event in our, in our Christian faith. It is the foundation of our belief and the reason why we have hope in eternal life. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of our faith, and it is something that we celebrate every year. 
The resurrection of Christ is a powerful and life-changing event, and today we will explore the many benefits of this resurrection. I want to, if I have time, to share with you 11 benefits with scriptural reference so that you'll walk out of here not just, you know, a usual, normal uh, Easter celebration, but you will know how his resurrection, re resurrection has impact on your life and that every day you can take hold of this impact that's com that comes as a result of the resurrection. We are celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Resurrection Sunday. And like the Scripture said, if Jesus was not raised from the dead, then what we're doing is useless. That if Jesus was not raised from the dead, then all of this is a lie and a waste of time. You might, you, you might as well be outside playing golf somewhere or at Waffle House or something if Jesus was not raised from the dead. But the fact of the matter is he was raised from the dead and he was the first one to be raised from the dead. And then all of us who die in Christ Jesus are going to be in the many numbers. He's the first fruit of that. And honey, you and I have hope that if God raised Jesus from the dead, those who believe in Jesus will be raised from the dead as well. So when you die, that is not the end, praise God. You'll chill out a little bit, and then God will, will release a trump or a commandment, and those who are in Christ shall be raised from the dead and will put on our new heavenly body, and none of that would be possible if Jesus was not raised from the dead. So the first benefit, the resurrection, number one, gives us hope. The resurrection gives us hope. It is the hope of eternal life. And the resurrection gives us hope of eternal life, which is the foundation of our faith. The resurrection says to us, that when we die believing in Jesus, when we die saved, when we die as Christians, Satan didn't win because the resurrection gives us hope of eternal life. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 through 4. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 through 4 in the King James. And he says here, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. See, we have a, a hope or an expectation. We, 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 we leave this place with an expectation that we're going to be raised from the dead because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Verse 4, it is to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fate is not away. It's reserved in heaven for you. See, I got good news for you. You will. Everybody's going to die one day, but you want to make sure you die as a Christian. You want to make sure you die as somebody that got saved. You want to make sure you die as somebody that, that believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you die, when somebody, when, 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 as somebody who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, then your great hope is I am going to be raised from the dead and I am going to have eternal life in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. So I tell you right now, those who are born again, when they die, understand the old song, don't cry for me. Because it's not like what you think it is. It might be sad on your side, but on the other side, they are having a party. They're having that, I used to... <laughs> I don't know if they'll sing that there, so I'll stop right there. <laughs> and then look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 and 22. You get that same great hope. That's a joy that's on the inside of you that says, you know, now that I am born again, I have the assurance that I'm going to be raised from the dead and have eternal life with Jesus Christ. That came from the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse, uh, verse 20 through 22 he says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of dead. 
So death came by a man, but then Jesus showed up and said, not only death came by a man, but he says the resurrection comes by a man. So if that one man, Jesus, was raised from the dead and you believe in Jesus, honey, you're going to be raised from the dead. The Bible says that. They, they, they said just in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the trump of God will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first. I sure hope you don't live near a cemetery because it's going to be a sight to see. Amen? And he says in verse 22, he says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. In Adam, man was, has got to die. But in Christ, man who believes is going to live again. It's not over at death, praise God, for a Christian. Amen. You're just taking a little break, praise God, getting ready for a new house that's going to last for eternity. Hallelujah. This house won't be able to help you throughout eternity. It, 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 it fades away. You're going to put on a new body. You're going to put on your glory house. Hallelujah. Somebody said, what is that glory house going to look like? Something similar to what Jesus had on when he was raised from the dead. The Bible says he walked through the door, the door being shut, and yet he sat down and ate some fish and honeycomb. You'll have access to the spirit realm and at the same time access to the physical realm. Glory be to God. Amen. And so you got to understand that this hope is not just wishful thinking, but it is a confident expectation that we will spend eternity with God. And the church said amen. amen. Here's the second benefit, Romans chapter 425 in the NLT. The second benefit, the resurrection gives us forgiveness. The resurrection gives us forgiveness. In Romans chapter 4 and verse 25, he says, he was handed over to die. Why? Because of our sins. That's why he died. He was handed over to die because of our sins. And he is raised to life to make us right with God. See, he was handed over to die because he died to save me from my sins. He took on all my sins upon his body. But the Scripture says he was raised to life to make me right with God. I have an assurance that God has forgiven me. The resurrection of Jesus Christ assures me that God has forgiven me from all of my sins. So don't, don't walk around sin conscious. Don't get up in the morning talking about, Lord, forgive me for the sins I hadn't committed yet. Jesus was raised from the dead. You can believe that all your sins have been forgiven. The resurrection of Jesus Christ was the ultimate sacrifice that paid the penalty for our sins. And this means that through faith in Jesus Christ, we can be forgiven of our sins and we can have a right relationship with God because his resurrection gives us forgiveness. Number three, the third benefit of his resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus Christ gives us power. Everybody say power. power. Now, power is the ability to get results. Power is the ability to get the job done. Look at Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. His resurrection gives us the ability to have power. Verse 10 he says this, and, and he, says, uh, he says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Now, he says here, I want to experience the power that raised him from the dead. I'm telling you, it was the power of God that raised Jesus from the dead, and he is saying because that power was, was responsible for raising him from the dead, you and I will experience the, the very same power that raised Jesus from the dead. He says, I want to, to suffer with him and share in his death, and so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. I don't know what you need to be raised from, but I do know that you have access to the power to raise you from whatever it is you're in. See, Jesus had access to the power that raised him from the dead. 
You might need to be raised out of depression. You might need to be raised out of debt. You might need to be raised out of a bad relationship. You might need to be raised out of unemployment. You might need to be raised out of some sickness or disease that's on your body. But the assurance is, is that the resurrection of Jesus Christ grants you access to power that raised Jesus from the dead, and that same power that raised Jesus from the dead can certainly raise you out of your mess. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19 and 20. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. In the NLT, he says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. So those who believe have access to the ability to get results. Get results in, in whatever area that you might be failing in. You have the ability to do that. He said, this is the same mighty power that raised Jesus from the dead. The same mighty power, verse 20, that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor that at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. So the power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to us, how? Through the Holy Spirit. The day you got born again, the Holy Spirit moved on the inside of you. You have the power of God to raise you up out of things by the Holy Spirit that was given to you on the day you were born again. This power enables us to live a life that is pleasing to God. There's power to help you live a life that's pleasing to God and to overcome the challenges that we face in this world. See, you, you depend on your ability and your intellect and your power but he's granted you power or ability through the Holy Spirit to help you to overcome the different challenges that you have in this life. So what we need to do is in the midst of challenges, we need to just go to God and say, Father, I trust you that the power that's in me is going to assist me in getting me out of this challenge right now. Quit looking to yourself every time you go through something and look to Jesus, praise God. Look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 13 in NL2, NLT. There's power available. And not many Christians use that power. You just think, well, that's the devil and the devil's busy, but there's power. We need to access that power. I tell you in Jesus' name over the next three months, I believe some of you are going to access that power. And you won't be able to brag about how you got out because you, you know and understand it was the power of God that got you out. Nobody but Jesus can go around and rearrange and change things in your life, and then later on you sit there and try to figure out how did this happen. I'm telling you how. It's the resurrection of Jesus Christ providing power to us through the Holy Spirit to those who believe. Now, if you're always going around, well, I don't know if I can believe that. Well, I don't know if I can believe that. Then you won't access power because there's one thing you need in this life. You're going to need to believe that Jesus was raised from the dead and made power available to you. In verse 13, Philippians 2, he says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. You don't have to depend on your disciplined lifestyle to do what pleases him. The Holy Ghost will help discipline you so you can do what pleases him. In fact, everything you've been trying to do in your life and you're sweating trying to do it, the power of God's available to you. But you've got to access that power, not by the five things you do, just by believing. I believe I have the power of God, and I believe that this is going to be all right, and that's going to be all right, and I believe somehow the money going to come in somewhere. Have you noticed that maybe you didn't get a big, big miracle, but things just seem to always work out all right? That's what the power of God is. The power of God is things always work out right. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know where it's going to happen, but I trust God that it's going to happen. Some of you came here this morning sitting in a situation that you don't know how you're going to get out of, and you're doing the best thing right now. You're sitting here receiving from Jesus instead of out there trying to do something for Jesus, praise God. Honey, if you can receive from the Lord, how many you know His power is going to be released to do some amazing things in your life? 
I prophesy over your life right now that burdens are going to be removed and yokes are going to be destroyed because of the power of God. Not because you deserved it, not because you earned it, but you just believed God and you, you entered into a rest where you quit sweating trying to make something happen and you said, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I don't know how to do this, but you do. Lord, I know how I got in this, but I don't know how to get out, but you do. I don't know where the money going to come from, but you do. Lord, I lost my job. I need another job. You know how to get it to me right now. Stop depending on yourself and start depending on the only one that can help you. His name is Jesus. Are you listening to me now? Number four, the fourth benefit, the resurrection gives us victory, watch this, over death. The resurrection gives us victory over death. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 54 through 57, the King James. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 54 through 57. This is amazing, man. He says, so when this corruption, look at this now, when this corruption, now, he's, he's referring to this physical body. This body is going to be corrupted. When this corruption shall put on incorruption, now, now, you're going to take off the physical body and you're going to put on your glorified body. He says, and this mortal, you're mortal because you don't live forever. You were created to live forever, but sin stopped that. He says, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. So, there's coming a time where you're going to take off this mortal having to die and put on the immortality never having to die. My God. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death, look at this, the, the sting of death is sin. It's a sting. And the strength of sin is the law. So he says the law strengthens sin. And you're still trying to live by the laws in the Old Testament because that's what you're used to living by. You come to church and you hear about the laws. And so what happens as a pastor, if I sit up here and just preach the law of Moses to you, guess what happens? I am strengthening sin in your life. It's a guarantee you're going to be sinning somewhere because I'm preaching what gives sin strength. I'm teaching it, baby. I'm teaching it. <laughs> and we walk, and we say we don't understand why we're talking about grace or I don't believe, I don't believe that because that's, all you heard was the law. And you come to church condemned, come to church full of shame, come to sh church full of guilt, because that's what the law does. The law was given to strengthen sin. The reason why God gave the law is so he can strengthen sin, so it could bring man to a place where he would finally realize, no matter how hard I try, no matter how much I sweat, I need a savior. I, I, I can't do this by myself. I might go 10 days without cussing at all, but on the, on the 11th day, I'm cussing everybody out. I need a savior. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the proof that death has been defeated, and we have the assurance that we will be raised to eternal life. Amen? Amen. Number five, here's the fifth benefit. The resurrection gives us peace. Oh, my God. I believe the number one thing Satan is after in our lives is our peace. Yeah. He'll leave your money alone, but he want to mess with your peace. He'll leave your relationships alone, but he want to mess with your peace. He'll let you get your job and your promotion, but he want to mess with your peace. John 14, verse 27 in the King James, Jesus' resurrection gives us peace. And he says, peace, Jesus says, peace I leave with you. Now check this out, these two words, my peace. 
See, you don't understand. When you get Jesus' peace, that's different from the world's peace. We, we, we're not talking about getting a massage and getting some peace right there. We're not talking about taking a deep breath and blowing out. We're talking about the peace of Jesus that will be there in the midst of all hell breaking loose. We're talking about the peace of Jesus that in the middle of trouble, people don't even understand how is it that you're able to stand and you tell them it's the peace of Jesus. You tell them, I don't understand how I'm able to stand, but it's the peace of Jesus. Just lost your husband, just lost your wife, don't know what you're going to do, and everybody's sitting back there waiting on you to just lose it, and, 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 you, and you stay steady the whole time. Somebody said, what's that? You say, that's the peace that came with the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about the peace the world can give you from going on a vacation, from eating some good food, from just keeping everybody away from it. Children, y'all stay away from them. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about that peace. I'm talking about a peace where all that can be around you and it still won't be able to mess you up. I'm talking about a peace where you don't know where the money going to come from. And they putting your uh, furniture out right now. And in the midst of it, you help them put it out because you got peace that somehow God is going to do something to reverse this situation. And I don't know if you understand what I'm, what I'm talking about, but if it were not for this peace, I'd have lost my mind a long time ago. If it were not for this peace, I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. Because when I was going through all of the attack on my body, I'm like, Lord, are you mad at me? And I know he wasn't mad at me, but I was asking him, what's up? What's going on? How am I almost dying from, 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 from this, from, uh, uh, and, and, and then something else come after that? And it, it didn't even give me no break. It went from COVID almost dying to shingles, which was Satan himself came straight out of hell and jumped on my body. From shingles to COVID to cancer, with tumors that was eating all my nutrition, get a bullshit but somehow, and I don't know how, I don't know how, but somehow I knew that everything was going to be all right. It's not the peace that comes from the world, it's the peace that Jesus left me, hallelujah. Jesus knew we were going to have trouble, so he said, here, here, take my peace. Get my peace. Hold on to my peace until I can come back. I'm going to leave you the Holy Ghost so you can get some power, and I'm going to leave you my peace so you'll have a shield. Hallelujah. And I tell you, when the devil and all his demons, I, I started, you, what, what's that guy who, who bent backwards and then bullets be going? Uh, Who? The Matrix. I felt like that over the last three years. Death coming, I said. Shingles coming. Cancer coming with three tumors. But peace is the only thing that can stand you upright and you can stand and face the trouble and know you're going to come out like God said you're going to come out. So I don't know about you, but I come to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, whatever you might be going through this morning, whatever the doctor might have told you, whatever your bank account looks like, whatever happened in your marriage relationship, no matter what's going on with you and your children, everything is going to be all right. My God. The peace that Jesus gives is not like the peace the world gives. It's a peace that transcends all understanding. And it enables us to have confidence while we're in a trial or a tribulation. Oh, that feels so good. In the middle of it, you got confidence that somehow it's going to be all right. Number six, here's the sixth benefit. 
The resurrection gives us, oh Lord, joy. Now, I didn't say happiness, I said joy. Now, if you keep your joy long enough, you'll get happy. But joy comes from what you know. Happiness is based on your condition in life. Now, look at this, John 16, 22. He was, he was equipping us, man. John 16, 22. He said, and you now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. Look at where the joy comes from. And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. All right, now you got to look at the foundation here. He says, I'll see you again. <clears throat> I'll see you again. I'm coming back. Know this and maintain your joy. Every time it looks crazy, and it's going crazy in the world, these people are losing their mind. These, you, got, you got college students in college, man, just committing suicide and they don't know why. Teach your kids, Jesus is coming back. That's enough to have you thinking that Jesus is coming back, joy, this is what I know, in the middle of all this crazy stuff going on. Now you see people and the next thing you know, they're being buried. You just spoke to them and they're gone. I got to, I got to, I got to look up. You promised me I'll see you again. That's all the joy I need. You promised me I'll see you again. It's going to be all right. Somebody said, yeah, but your feelings, honey, you don't live by your feelings. You're going to have some days when you wake up and you're not going to feel good. But that don't mean blow your brains out. That means make it through the day and go to bed early that night so you can start another day. And then that day might not be as, just a little bit better than the other day, but just do that again and it will progressively be all right and just keep Jesus on your mind. He coming back. I'm going to see him again. I'm going to see him again. I'm going to see him again. Now, the thing I don't want to do is see him when I'm not supposed to be seeing him. I don't want to go to heaven and they say, what you doing here? Amen. The joy comes from what I know. I know I'm going to see him again. So when all the chaos is going on in the world, Remember New Year's Eve, I said, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but it's just going to be more chaos upon chaos upon chaos. And that's all it's been, just chaos upon chaos upon chaos, just more of the same. I ain't got time to do that. You, you will f get depressed looking at the news because it's just, it's just more chaos upon chaos and, and propaganda and more just, you don't even know if they're telling the truth no more. You used to kind of, when, when, when uh, <laughs> Walter Cronkite was on the news, and PBS News, you, you, you had a little, little trust. But now, these jokes are getting on news. They're trying to be movie stars. I don't know if you're telling the truth or not. I don't know who did what, because people don't learn how to use the news to manipulate society into doing what they want you to do. And so I got to ask the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost will, will show you things to come, and he'll let you know stuff. You about to get married and you just met somebody and, and, and you think you know them? Y'all know you need to take your time. You don't know them yet. You don't know them. You need to see them when they mad. See what happens. Do they throw things when they get mad? Do they want to swing when they get mad? You don't know them? Oh, they're just nice all the time. Well, see, that's not sustainable. They ain't nobody nice all the time. <laughs> you need to take your time in some of these relationships. Well, I done found my man. You might have found your demon. You don't know. <laughs> Slow down, girl. Hold up. Hold up. Learn how to be okay with you and Jesus, all right? Get that down, Pat. <clears throat> so you don't have to need somebody else to help you to value yourself. <clears throat> you got to value you first. I value me if the whole world is against me. God loves me. I value me because he values me, praise God. And I don't need somebody's, you know, to certify me as being valuable. 
I don't need to be validated by Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. I have been validated by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And if he validates you, you're all right. Y'all better quit rushing into stuff. You need to back up and let the Holy Ghost talk to you a little bit. Oh, Holy Ghost, what you think about this? Somebody says, well, I don't know how to hear from them. Houston, we have a problem. And this is the reason why you just don't come to church and play church and do church and don't know how to do life. This is a real thing. You got to have a relationship with the Holy Ghost, a relationship with God, because you're going to need him. He's the game changer in your life. And you can't be coming to church talking about, I depend on Sister Carol to tell me what the Holy Ghost said. Sometimes God will tell Sister Carol that ain't none of your business. Even though you heard it, keep it to yourself because I got to grow them up. And that's what life will do. Life assists God in helping you to grow up. He told you to do this, but you didn't do it. You made it too deep. He said, all right, let life get them. And then life come up and whoop that butt real good. <laughs> life come up and you lose that house and you lose that and this and that and all that stuff happened. And after a while, you're going to lift your heads up toward the hill from which cometh your help. And you're going you're gonna to pray this simple prayer, Lord, help. And now God say, I got you where I want you now. But see, you think you know more than God right now. Can nobody tell you? No, you just got baptized, still got water dripping off your pants leg, and you want to tell God about what he know about your life. That's all right. That's all right. Keep trying to live life and impress everybody. That's all right. Because after a while, when the money gone and the friends are gone and, and all of the, everything you thought was supposed to happen gone, ain't nobody validating you no more. Your Instagram account done went down to zero because you boring now. They done seen everything that you wasn't supposed to show them. I mean, you old news now. <laughs> That's all right. Ain't no use me losing my mind trying to want something more than what you want. I'm going to back up. You got him, God. I tell you one time, maybe two. I tell my family one time, two. After that, I act like I don't even know what they're talking about. Like they, I, I, I'm like Scooby-Doo. Because <laughs> I decided that folks ain't going to kill me and then wait on the next pastor and kill them too. I ain't doing that. I got life and I'm going to live it. I ain't paying attention to all those naysayers anyway. I got my heart set on Jesus. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to do it the way that God want me to do it. And when it's all over with, hope I see you in heaven, I don't know. Because life might try to get you to change your mind and turn your back on God. And even then, if you're not mature enough to backslide, he ain't going to pay no attention to you. That's how God is. God said, oh, you, ain't even, you don't even know enough to backslide. Just these angels, don't pay them no attention. They don't even know enough. <laughs> to my God, if you don't do this, I ain't going to serve you no more. They said, they don't know nothing. Just baby, babies just hollering. You know, how, you know how your little kid, the, the very word you don't want them to say, that's the one they pick up and they end up cussing. I had a sister used to do that all the time. She used to say, blank it blank. Mom said, what you say? She said, I, 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 yeah, you cuss. <laughs> Amen. You got to learn how to chill. This life can destroy you and kill you if you don't have Jesus with you. I'm telling what I know. It'll kill you and destroy you. And then some of you are so deep, you, you, you're waiting on God to come down off the throne and personally heal you when he's already put resources in the earth and he's trying to guide you through wisdom to get to those resources. But you sitting up there, if the Lord don't come down and heal me itself, then I guess I'm going to have to die. See you. Because I ain't got no problem with an anointed hand going in and doing an operation and an anointed pill going in and doing something that needs to be done. I'm not trying to do this to impress you. Well, I can't have a pill. I can't have an operation because I'm a man of faith. Yeah, I got faith that God has already healed me. Now I need the wisdom to see how he wants to direct that healing.
It's good to some. Some of them like, I can't take all this stuff. And somebody done told my business. Ain't nobody told your business. This is the Holy Ghost trying to save you before you kill yourself and allow yourself to be wiped off the planet. And it's just, so what you don't come to church but on Easter? But on Easter... <laughs> I'm sorry, that was shame. I'm sorry, that was like <laughs> condemnation, guilt, shame, you know, that was from my, my old past. I'm grateful that you come to church on Easter. And every Easter that you come, I'm going to do everything I can to try to get your attention so that Jesus can be the Lord of your life. Because he loved you and I do too. Ooh, I'm getting kind of tired now. I think we got about two more. I got 11, but I might not be able to give you but two more. <laughs> See, I'm getting back in shape, you know. <laughs> What's this, number seven? All right. <laughs> the seventh benefit. I've been hollering for about 30 minutes, ain't it? It's time, it's time to talk now. The resurrection, number seven, gives us a new identity. If the one thing that Satan wants to always come after you is he's trying to come after your identity, he wants you to think you're a bad boy because you do bad. Your behavior does not determine your identity. Your identity determines your behavior. And Jesus determines what your identity is. See, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, this is awesome, man. In verse 17, he talks about this new creation that you have been made. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. I'm in Christ. I'm a new creature. And a brand new baby doesn't have a past. I'm a new creature. I don't have a past. I'm new. Quit letting the devil try to get you to go back to your past. You're a new creature. When you had a little baby, that baby ain't got no past sins. They're gone. You're a new creature. It's gone. You don't keep calling yourself a sinner. Well, you know, Brother Dollar, we just all sinners. Speak for yourself. I'm a saint. That's what the Bible says. It says those of us who are born again, we're no longer sinners. We're saints. So understand your identity. He is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The resurrection of Jesus enables us to be born again and to have a new identity that's in Christ. We are no longer defined by our past sins and failures. You're not defined by your past sins and failures. It's amazing the number of people that spend too much time looking in the rearview mirror. Your past sins doesn't, de doesn't, it doesn't define you. You don't hear them calling Paul the murderer, Paul. The murderer, Moses. The murderer, David. Your past sins and failures do not define you. You are not your past sins. You are not your past failures. Let it go and stop spending so much time in a past that Jesus has already taken care of. If you start spending too much time in your past, you're just granting your past access to try to show back up in your present. And now the stuff you got victory over, you're fighting the same battle that's already been won over again because you back there trying to pick up old rocks. Let it go. Everybody was stupid in their past. <laughs> I know some of you, I wasn't. Yes, you were. Everybody has some crazy. Now, it might not be the same kind of crazy. But everybody has some weird stuff, crazy, hellacious. You just was just an intelligent liar. <laughs> yes, did you go to the movies last night? I absolutely did, fanatically so, and it's very perspicacious of you to ask me <laughs> if I went to the movie. But you was lying because you didn't want nobody to think you were the nerd that you really are. 
That doesn't define you anymore. You are not your past. You are not your failures. Your past and your failures were absolutely the curriculum necessary to cause you to grow forward. But you don't let it define you. You don't let it define you. And that's what the world does. They keep letting their past define them. And they are what they do. We're not. We are who Jesus has made us, and we trust in Him. Amen? Amen. We are defined by our relationship with Jesus. Say that. I am defined by my relationship with Jesus. Say it again. I am defined by my relationship with Jesus. I see some of y'all miss the children's ministry a lot this morning. <laughs> Somebody say, woo, you ain't lying. <laughs> now, I hope you sign up and volunteer and help them out. <laughs> Amen. Number eight, the resurrection gives us a purpose. Ephesians 2.10 in NLT, the resurrection gives us a purpose. Ephesians 2.10 says this, for we are God's masterpiece. Look at that. Say it. Say, I'm God's masterpiece. Oh, oh, glory to God. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. So the resurrection enabled us. The resurrection of Jesus enables us to live a life that is pleasing to God and to fulfill the purpose that He has for us. God has a purpose for everybody in here. And that's why you can't get caught up with what everybody else is doing. You'll lose your purpose. You continue to trade in the valuable, authentic you for a cheap copy. This resurrection, we are masterpieces. We have a purpose to fulfill, and God has wired you in line with that purpose. You're trying to find out why is it that you are so good in math? Somehow that math thing is going to go along with the purpose. You're trying to figure out why is it so easy for you to, to dissect something that's going to go along with a purpose. Why you like building things and doing so well, that's going to go with a purpose. Everything that God purposed you to do he beforehand wired you in that way and then will finish the development of it as you get in life because he'll use life to help mature the wiring that he put in. See, it's, it's an awesome thing when you're building a house. You get that wiring in, you're almost there. But the beauty of that thing is that comes with the labor involved to get it where it needs to be. And it's not you that's doing it, it's him and that's why you just have to make your mind up. I'm getting the Word. I'm going to get fed the Word no matter what. I'm going to make the Word priority no matter what. I'm going to get this Word. I'm going to get this Word. And over a period of time, you just could be committed to getting the Word. You'll realize your life is changing because you're exposed to the Word. And you know what? You'll start looking younger because the Word of God is a Maybelline and a Max Factor <laughs> that you have never experienced. Young lady, you don't need to go and get some work done on you. Just spend time in the Word, and the Holy Ghost will start doing some work on you. Praise God. Skin will start looking good. You'll have a Holy Ghost glow. My God, my God. And when old Frankfurt comes and sees you, his eyes just pause, and you find his wine and just his kind. Amen. And, and then he might come up to you and ask you for those seven digits. Oh, excuse me. They don't ask for seven digits no more. They ask for the, your, I, your IG. Give me your IG. Um, I, I just learned this yesterday, so. <laughs> Number nine, the resurrection gives us unity. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, the resurrection gives us unity. The resurrection of Jesus unites 
us as believers and enables us to work together to fulfill the mission that God has given us. Look at what he said here, Ephesians 4, 4 through 6, he says, for there is one body and one spirit. There's this individual Christian, but all of us together working corporately as one, and then there's one body, one spirit. So what's the enemy to that unity? The spirit of division and all of the isms that divide. We just can't figure out how to get along. You know, one time I thought it was whites versus blacks until I went to Africa and it was tribes versus tribes and they the same color. Just always a spirit of division. And you know where a spirit of division derives from? When we magnify the difference. I don't care what you do. When you magnify the difference between management and labor, division is going to come. When you magnify the difference between rich or poor, division is going to come. Magnifying the difference is what creates division. And that's what Jesus showed up to, to deal with. Magnifying the difference between man and woman and talking some tomfoolery like a woman shouldn't be pastoring, when in the book of Acts, the majority of the churches, they didn't have buildings, they had church and homes were pastored by women. You're just not reading the Bible if you got a problem with a woman pastoring. You just ain't reading it right. Jesus didn't have no problem with a woman carrying the most important message that was ever given. Go and tell them I'm alive and I have risen from the dead. He trusted a woman with the message. How come you can't trust them? Oh, maybe it's your inferiority. Maybe you feel so short and so inferior that you have to get a false sense of superiority over a woman to make you feel a little better about your own insecurities. Well, she make more money than me, and I can't live with that. Are you serious? If Taffer want to go be a billionaire, I am your boy. What do you want me to do? <laughs> I'm your boy. I be skipping. Yeah, baby, what else we going to do? Because she going to take care of her boy. I ain't got no problem. As long as I can do what God called me to do. Ain't no competition. But amplifying the difference brings a spirit of division, and it's tearing this country apart. It's tearing this country apart. It's tearing churches apart and relationships apart because of a spirit of division. And the message should not be, well, God can only use this group but not that group. The message should be, if God used a jackass, he can use whatever he wants to use. You don't get to limit God's power. When you say that God can only use this group, you're limiting God's power to that group. God can use whoever he wants to use. The Bible says he promotes, he lifts up whoever he wants to lift up and bring down whoever he wants to bring down. And now all of a sudden you get up here talking about, you know, uh, well, God can only use this or God can only use that. And then you hide behind one point in a scripture. God hates the shedding of innocent blood. He also hates lying. Read the rest of the scripture. He hates that. He hates lying. He hates the person that starts division. So if you're going to tell a bit of the truth, tell the whole thing now. But anything, a bit of the truth, if it causes division, Satan's saying, yeah. Don't tell the rest of it. Ain't nobody reading their Bible anyway, so just go ahead and borrow that and use the scripture because they don't know if it's in there or not. Go up there and tell them, say, you know, uh, <laughs> go up there and tell them, say, say, say God <laughs> helps those who helps themselves. 
That ain't nowhere in the Scripture. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Like the Bible says, I'd rather have Jesus. It, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't, you know, I'm glad you'd rather pick Jesus, praise God, but you, you, you're calling stuff Scripture that's, that didn't make the text. I don't know where you're getting this stuff from. God says we ought to hate anybody that got sin in their life. Well, hate yourself. Well, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost can't dwell in unclean vessels. Well, ain't no other kind of vessel to dwell in. Because we don't, we don't read the Word no more. Don't nobody come to church to read the Word. They come to church to hear what they already know. And then when somebody says something in the Word, I don't agree with that. You don't even know enough to disagree with none. Sit down. You don't know nothing. A lot of, you're trying to participate in something you ain't even mature enough to participate in. You just learned Jesus wept. You still don't know why he wept. That's just the only Easter speech you could get. Because you, you got up there. Your mom down there, come on, baby, please, please. Jesus wept. <laughs> That's how the church is today. A little baby church, a little Jesus wept church. Isn't that sad? A little Jesus wept church. Picking out your favorite preacher. Oh, I like them, and you list all the things you like. Like you done found the perfect church. Ain't no perfect church. Ain't no perfect pastors. All of them got issues. Everybody in the church got an issue. And your problem is, is you keep looking for a church without no issue. Doesn't exist. <laughs> Y'all think, is Pastor okay? <laughs> oh, I'm more than okay. I am extravagantly well. Yes, full of energy. You heard me do this much in a long time, because I was tired all the time. Full of energy. I ain't using the N-word. I ain't cussing on the pulpit. I'm delivered. Praise God. God. I'm telling you, it works. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. Verse 5, verse, there is one Lord, there's one faith, there's one baptism, there's one God and Father of all who is over all, in all, living through all. How we get all these denominations if that's true? Because we just can't figure out how to deal with our ego. Just trying to be impotent. <sighs> Listen, Jesus is coming back. I don't know when, but I know it's close. I'm trying to get everything out I need to get out because I am not going to have regret when I see him. And if you show up in heaven trying to tell on me about something I didn't teach, you know them big old, big old chairs with the big back behind it, I'm going to be right behind that back. And if you tell that lie, I'm going to say, use a lie. <laughs> Taught it, Lord. They never came to church. I'm going to be free when I get to heaven, boy. I'm going to be free when I get to heaven and you ain't going to like my house when you see it. <laughs> it's going to be, ooh. Like to see you get jealous then. Like to see you get jealous in heaven. In heaven! Still can't rejoice with nobody. <laughs> Don't tell everybody what you're doing because not everybody rejoices with you. Don't show everybody your new house because everybody ain't happy for you. But Jesus is. 
And you don't realize that's a missed seed. When somebody shows you what God's done in their life, man, you ought to cry. You ought to laugh. You ought to dance. Because why? Because, because now that they are out of the line, you next. The line is moving. Learn how to rejoice with people. Don't always got a problem with what they have. But I don't like the colors. Ain't nobody asked you what you like it or not. Okay, now, now I'm, just, I'm just fussing. All right, number, number 10. All right, two more in one minute. The resurrection assures us our salvation. Romans 4, 25, the NLT. The resurrection assures us our salvation. Jesus' resurrection is proof that God accepted his sacrifice on our sins. Through faith in Jesus, we are justified. We are made right with God. Verse 25, he was handed over to die because of our sins, and he was raised to life to make us right with God. And then finally, the resurrection gives us a future. Look at Revelations 21 and 4. Revelations 21 and 4. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. All these things are gone forever. Our future is based on the promise of eternal life with God in heaven. No more tears, no more death. It's painful when people die. I've seen so many of our members go and, and family members, I, I need to take time off so I can go and grieve properly. I've not even had a chance to grieve properly. What the Bible says, don't grieve. There you go again, a little wet dripping self, ain't ready yet. <laughs> he says, don't grieve as those who have no hope. I have hope, but I'm also a human, and it hurts, and I miss these people, and I want to, and, and you have to. If you don't learn how to deal with these things properly, they deal with you. While you're going around with your chest puffed out like you're super Christian, you need to deal with stuff like that. I, I'm smart enough to know I got to take some time out of this pulpit because I got, I got to go and deal with some stuff like this. And I, and, and, and I don't do good getting emotional around people, so I got to get away from everybody. You know, Ken will tell you, I have a hard time being emotional around people. I'm embarrassed when people try to honor me. I'm embarrassed when I'm trying to share. I don't, I, I just, and I need to deal with it. And I am. And I'll be gone for three months, and you, you need to stay here. <laughs> don't be playing that stuff like, oh, you ain't going to be here. Well, you know, I'll, you know, mm, mm, no. No, you're mature than that. This is your church. You take care of it. But there'll be no more of that. No more death. No more sorrow. Some of you have experienced that, and it's painful. No more crying. No more pain. I never knew pain until that shingles came. That pain is real. I got, my heart goes out to anybody that experiences any kind of pain. All of it will be gone forever. The resurrection of Jesus. Every head bow, every eye close. If you can hold your walk, and I certainly would appreciate it. Lord, 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 where would we be if it were not for you? And yet we still need your help. We, we need your help because this thing, called, this thing called life is still coming at us. And you've provided a manual of instruction You've provided wisdom. You've provided a way out. You even said there's no temptation that's going to be that strong that you won't provide a way out of it. You, 
You've provided it for us. Help us to draw near to you. Help us to come near to you. Take all of our trouble, all of our pain, all of our doubts. Take all of our religion and help us to have an authentic relationship with you. You know everybody's situation in here today. You know their hearts and their concerns and their stresses. You know what they're afraid of. Come into our hearts. Today, do something so magnificent. Prove to the doubter that you're real. I don't know how you would do that, but you do. Prove to the hurting that you're healed, that your healing's available and that you're real. Prove to the person that mismanaged their finances and they're on the last dime that you have their business at heart. Save today. Heal today. Deliver today by your power and your strength. Let us all roll, roll away our embarrassments and our need to be validated by others and let us just focus in on you. Great and mighty God, be our Savior. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I, I hear you, but I just I feel stuck sometimes. I just, I feel like I've tried all of that and ain't nothing. But there's something to just being relentless that I'm going to trust God come hell or high water, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to cement myself in my stance. And I'm going to trust that God's going to make a difference. If you're here today and you've never been born again, and, and it's, it comes up and it comes up and it comes up and just, I don't know, somehow the spirits that be just conveniently get you away from it as if that's not for me. And it's for all of us. I want, I want you to get saved today. Oh, God. Oh, God, I want you to, to, to receive a Savior today that he was raised for you. Don't let it be in vain. Take it all. If you're here right now, I want to ask you to do something real bold and you're not born again, it, just quickly, I'm not going to do any games. Raise your hands real quick. Count to three. I'm not going to do all this stuff. Come to this altar right now. If you're, if you're not born again, you say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make this change today. Get out your seat. Come to this altar now. If you've been born again, but you want to recommit yourself to God, get out your seat. Come on, meet me down here right now. If you, want, if you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the evidence speaking in tongues, come on, come on, be bold, be strong. Get out your seat right now. Come on, right now. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. If, if God's calling you to join this church and you know this is where you're supposed to be in spite of the slanderous remarks, get where you're supposed to be. You've, 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 you've heard it yourself. You've sat on it yourself. Come on, no fear, no fear, no fear, no fear, no fear. Come on, you're almost here. You're almost here. You're almost here. You got a few steps to go. You're almost here. Come on, come on, come on. Set the standard for your family. Set the standard for your children. Set the standard for everything that God has called you to do. Set it. No more fear, no more fear, no more fear. In 
fact, I cast the spirit of fear away from you right now. Fear has kept you from so many things. Come on, you're almost here. You're almost here. Come on, you're almost here. Come on, bring your kids, bring your husband. Y'all might be divorced. Y'all come on down here. Let's get it back there together again. Whatever you need to come on, let's, let's do it because the God that I preached about today, he is able to do super abundantly above all that you can ask or think. You can do it, man. You can do it. Today, major change, major change in your life today. Today, major change in your life. Major change in your life. It seems so simple, and yet I understand why the things go through your head the way they go through your head. It's like you've seen so many tricks and so many fake stuff in your church. And come on, baby, I believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. I believe that the best is yet to come in your life. You have tried the rest, but now it's time to try the best. And Jesus is the best thing that can ever happen to you. He's the best thing that can ever happen to you. He's the best thing that can ever happen to your family. He is. He is the best thing. He is the best thing. He is. I remember when I, when I didn't believe, and this was not my destiny to, that I thought to be in a pulpit preaching. But God will give you the desire to do what he called you to do, even though there was a time that you didn't want to do it. And for a lot of you, it starts today that grace will teach you. And everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. All is well. All is well. Congregation, before we dismiss you, would you help me out? Would you stretch your hands? towards this altar, pick somebody out. The Bible says where two or three shall agree, it shall be done. Father, I pray for every person that's come to this altar. I pray that they get to know you, Jesus, and that by your grace, you will change them 180 degrees. They will come to know you and your power. They will come to understand what you've called them to do. Take the taste of sin out of their mouths. Give them the desire to want you more and more and more, that even some nights this week, they'll wake up in amazement saying, something is happening to me and it's good. Blessings upon their lives and their families and restoration upon them now. In Jesus' name, and all that agree said, amen. amen. At this time, if you'll turn this way and follow this gentleman to the prayer room, they're going to take you and minister to you and give you biblical understanding of how to obtain it. Church, don't you appreciate all those who've come down today? It's a blessing of the Lord. Congregation, would you please stand for our final blessing? Thank you so much for taking the time to come to church today. We know you didn't have to do it, but you did it anyway, praise the Lord. And we want to say Happy Easter to you and enjoy your day. And remember, Jesus is the best thing that will ever happen to you. Amen? Amen? Praise God. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be responsible for escorting you into an abundance of favor. I pray divine protection over your life all week long. I pray that God's favor will cause promotion to come. 
And I pray that whatever trouble you found yourself in, that the great deliverer will assist you this week. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the almighty God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, world changes. Have a great day. What if we could take every groundbreaking message on grace, all the life-changing sessions from conferences, and every radical interview with the stars and those with inspirational stories that moved us, and share them with you 24 hours a day? Now we can. This is our network. It can all be found here. Changing Your World Network. Streaming hope, grace, and the wisdom of God with simplicity and understanding. 24 hours a day, seven days a week for free. Download the Creflo Dollar Ministries app on your smart TV and streaming devices. Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and begin streaming. Changing Your World 24-hour network through the app today. Visit cywn.tv for more information now. Change the world. Change the world.